The top abstracts of the meeting were center stage at the plenary scientific session. ASH Secretary Dr. Cynthia Dunbar gave us an overview of some of the top research presented. Dr. Catherine Broom and her colleagues presented a, a new treatment modality for patients with immune thrombocytopenia. The drug called efgarcigemod has a completely novel mechanism of action. It actually increases the uptake of immunoglobulins in the, into, in the blood into cells and thereby decreases autoantibody levels. And more than half the patients with very refractory ITP responded um, in the trial with increased platelet counts and we hope this will translate into a better quality of life, decreased bleeding and the ability to go uh, about their daily business. Dr. Drayling and colleagues um, presented a large randomized controlled trial from Europe looking at the effect of substituting ibrutinib, a targeted uh, BTK inhibitor, in the treatment of mantle cell lymphoma, comparing ibrutinib plus uh, standard induction chemotherapy to autologous transplantation following standard induction therapy. And in this trial, the patients receiving ibrutinib uh, instead of autologous transplantation did not have worse outcomes. We also heard information information today um, from a very large European randomized controlled trial answering a question that has bedeviled um, clinicians treating uh, leukemias for the, the past three or four decades. So in patients with acute myeloid leukemia who relapse or have refractory disease, the question is to take these patients to allogeneic transplant, which is the only chance they have for your cure, do you have to give them a lot more chemotherapy first to try to get them into a remission? And there's been you know, no clear data on that question previously. And so in this large randomized controlled trial, there was no benefit to giving intensive chemotherapy again to try to get a patient into remission before moving to allogeneic transplant. We heard an abstract presented about a new monoclonal antibody called Inca 03389, I believe, um, that is actually specifically designed to interfere with the function of mutant calreticulin. So this has a lot of interesting potential applications with patients with myeloproliferative disease that have resulted from mutations in this particular protein. And the investigators presented preclinical data and human cell line um, assays as well as in animal models, it's really promising. And we hope that maybe next year at ASH we'll hear more information about its activity in patients. We also heard a very interesting abstract about the relationship between red cell production and metabolism. And the investigators uh, demonstrated a very synergistic and complex network governing how our erythroid cells make alpha hemoglobin chains and how that's controlled by cellular stress and metabolism in terms of a way of connecting our environment to our needs of making red blood cells. This also could have some implications in the future for treating various forms of anemia. Over the past uh, couple years of the pandemic, there's been a lot of interest in the relationship between thrombosis and inflammation. And that's also an issue in patients with sepsis and all kinds of infections. And the investigators in the plenary session talked about the relationship between deficiencies in a complement inhibitor, a natural complement inhibitor in our blood, and the risk of having venous thrombosis. And they were able to show both in uh, clinical uh, data analyses as well as in animal models that the loss of activity of this complement inhibitor leads to venous thrombosis. That also gives ideas for potential clinical interventions in the future in terms of interrupting this relationship between inflammation the complement system and our ability to make clots. So I'm really excited to hear the late-breaking abstract session this morning. In the first abstract, investigators looked at whether or not adding the bispecific antibody blinitumumab could improve outcomes in adults with B-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia. We're also going to hear about a new treatment for paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. Investigators looked at a new drug that's oral, an oral complement inhibitor instead of intravenous, and they took patients who had not had good responses to uh, available standard uh, PNH treatments and looked at whether uh, this oral drug could substitute. We're going to hear about some progress, uh, further progress in treating patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia. So we're going to hear about a comparison of abrutinib uh, to xanabrutinib, a new BTK inhibitor that appears to be more specific.